A lot of that, that waterfall defense that they have, and Canada not able to maintain any of those walls in that defense. So we had a couple of uh, really decent power jams where Canada was able to regain some points, but the U.S. still far ahead of that, and Canada having to reset a lot of those strategies. I, I would hope they did that in the halftime. They also have one player, uh, the Rev, number 71, who is five penalties in to his seven penalty cap, and so he's going to have to be very careful about how he plays in the second half. Yep, that's right, because if he falls out, I'm going to give him a hard time. <laughs> well, he was really nice to me earlier, so I try not to give him as hard a time. Yeah. <laughs> No. And, and the Rev, just a really aggressive player. He's been playing derby since the beginning of men's derby. He's a really aggressive player. He's a really hard-hitting player, and he's still adapting well, to the different style of play. Well, and he's also very, he's also very knowledgeable, very knowledge, knowledgeable about the game. Obviously, uh, coach of the new skids uh, for a number of years, got them up into the top 40 of the WFTDA. Corey Porter picking his way around the outside of the USA. Pat Quadzilla finally opening him up a hole on the outside. And he comes around to pick up Lee Jammer. Yeah, you know what? The most impressive thing about watching Team USA is we're seeing offensive blocking. Yep. Um, we're not we're not seeing, with the exception of early on where we saw Jonathan R kind of turn loose into a into a couple of two walls. Uh, for the most part, we were watching them really really work the offensive side of things. Well, and I think it's really... <laughs> Here, take that. <laughs> Corey Ackless just shoving Corey Porter into the Canadian wall and bashing a hole through it. Uh, to his credit, he stayed on his feet he did. because I don't think he was ready for it. It was amazing. Uh, I think a lot of it is that the USA wants to be really proactive in how they play. You know, they don't want to wait for something to happen and then react to it. They want to say, I want to make this thing happen. And I think that's going to be one of those things that after this tournament, teams are going to sit down and talk about and say, did you see how the USA did that thing where they didn't wait for something? They made it happen. And well, it's, a, it's a mental state yeah, to go into a game yep. with. And honestly, I hope everybody that's watching takes that away uh, because we just see too much of it in the sport as it is uh, you, you know we we uh, honestly we have seen so little of the classic passive offense this entire week which is great i think it makes for a much faster much more interesting much more competitive game and and we're playing under the old rule set so it has nothing yep. to do with rules and this will be the last time we see that so that's yep. a good reminder for people we are playing under the old rule set not the new rule set although i've heard the new rule set is amazing so i can't wait to see that oh look at titchborn right there standing nice job standing up against jonathan r but he's going to get pushed outside the zone of engagement and he is going to pick up that out of play call so he's headed to the penalty box some of you will know him as Noah Backtuck, referee up in Canada. Wow. Jane Bunny just donated 100 pounds to the Men's Roller Derby World Cup on the donate button. Oh, yes. It, well, we know what the uh, dollar... We know what the conversion rate is. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. So uh, click that donate button and drop a couple of bucks in there, and you don't have to, you know, you don't have to break the bank like Jane obviously just did, because that's amazing. But a uh, cup and uh, you know, five pounds, five quid, five dollars, five, five zloty, whatever, whatever your particular currency is, go ahead and do that. Uh, for those of you who have, I had a couple questions on the stream about lineups for Team USA. I'm just going to interrupt you for a second. We're in the middle of official timeout right now. But other, but please, go ahead. We we do have a couple of lineup changes. For those of you wondering, uh, TJ uh, Binkley and Townsend are not in the jammer rotation for today. They were in the jammer rotation yesterday. They're not injured. Uh, the U.S. is just simply changing up their jammer rotation slightly for this bout, and then they'll talk again for the next bout about what they want that jammer rotation to be again. So uh, they're lucky that to be able to them out like that, but we have a couple for those of you wondering. Bob, you want to pay some bills for us? Yes, I do. First off, we are on the Quad Skate Shop track. 
Uh, Quad Skate Shop, Europe's original brick and mortar roller derby equipment supplier. Quad Roller Skate Shop has the best selection and the most stock of any store on the continent. With excellent consultation services that only a fellow skater could provide, we've got all of your needs covered. We love this game. And we are back to the action. Thank you, Roddy Piper. <laughs> Corey Porter once again out on the jam for the USA, number zero for Canada, El Tanant. And Corey Porter just doing a quick hit it and quit it getting his points, calling it off, and resetting the jam. Uh, it know, looks, like, looks like there was a late call on Walker, and they were talking about that during the review, and so he is sitting in the penalty box right now. You know, it does make me wonder a little bit. every once in a while and uh, well there, yeah well there's not a lot of time between these games today no there's not um, and we're behind already so we're just going to be rolling this really quickly onto the next belt when we're done oh scotty slamilton with a beautiful squeeze past 144a or excuse me 14a magic johnson from canada yeah scotty slamilton has just looked fantastic today. yes Oh, look at that backwards move. He's going to give it a backwards spin then again. I think it was a triple sow cow, and he hits the landing. That was back in turn number three. Scotty Slamilton expecting a baby here pretty soon. His wife is at home right now, and she's about, uh, about two weeks out on her due date. So he's going to well, be going home. Congratulations. Going home to be a, a new dad. And with the, he already has a little son. I used to be one of those. <laughs> He's now a little, an old dad. He has a little son at home already, and so they're going to be welcoming uh, another son here very soon. And and if she's out there, I hope she's doing well. And she's a very nice lady, and Scott's a great guy. So so we're hoping she's doing well, and we're going to send him home safe and sound here in a couple days. Jonathan R. once again up to the line. Um, can't see who is up for Canada. We'll get to that in just a sec. Jonathan R. trying to do some good lateral wiggling around there at the back. Quadzilla moving to the front to try and open him a hole. Percy Control joining him, and they are going to try and work on getting him around. Quadzilla giving him a push, but he's going to run into stand aside on the other end of that. And I tell you, Brad S. is just being manhandled in this particular bout, unfortunately, yeah, for him. Boy, and Very talented, talented player. Definitely, but it, it's tough. You know, you have Quadzilla and Percy Control. Of course, Percy, a member of the St. Louis Gatekeepers, and he's just, you know, you talk to him and you watch him skate, and he's just this very quiet, mellow guy until you get him on the track, and then he's like a ninja. You just don't even see him, and then he pops out of no I Sometimes when I'm announcing, forget that he's there. Well, that's actually an excellent point because Percy Control is one of those guys that does his job so consistently. Right. It's easily, he's sometimes easily overlooked in the kind of impact that he has. Well, exactly, and that's what makes him so good at what he does is because I think the players don't notice him either, and he just appears before you magically, and that must be terrifying. Look at a nice little juke there. Look at that. He's going to shoot down the outside. As he, they create a lane for him, and he just like, okay, goodbye. Zoom. <laughs> Some guys have an extra step. He's got about three. Yeah, yeah. Well, Holy it, cow. It helps that he's a tall guy, and, it, you know, he just he pushes it through until it's done. And, and, and honestly, in the MRDA, I really do feel that Porter is one of those guys in the last two or three years that has just kind of, had that started out as kind of an occasional jammer that really has. Yeah, definitely. And he worked uh, very hard to get there. He's just been working hard with St. Louis and pushing to get to that position. Oh, Frank not so hot on one of his very rare times when he's on the floor. Stand aside and Red taking him on and he ends up, he pops right back up. But Johnson and 
and stand aside going after Frank not so hot for yeah, looking for the call but they're not going to get it stand aside was looking for a high block as he thought he took one up he took one in the face Wyatt looking to clear a hole, not quite working. So Canada working hard to keep Frank Natsohatra out and slowing him down significantly, but I, not able to contain him. I, I don't think you can. <laughs> not in this game, not the way that he's playing. Oh, look at that right there. You know, he's got that he's got that perception where he just knows when to dip that shoulder and put that extra yep. step in there. You know, and, and it's interesting because I watch a lot of players with their style, and I know there are a couple players that I see have a very similar style to Frank's. Um, you know, for example, Dilly Dally, who is now playing for Puget Sound, yes. and he, he seems like he sees things five seconds before they're going to happen, and it's magical to watch him. He'll be somewhere, and then something will happen, and magically he'll already be where he needs to be. Like, he already knew it was going to happen, and Frank is very similar to that. You know, he's it's like he knows where the holes are going to open up before they open up, and he takes them. Well, you know, I think he's got a size advantage in the fact that he is he is of medium size. Yes. Because when he sees the big guys, he knows which way they're leaning, and he knows he can dip underneath and zip by. Sugar boots and streak, manhandling Canada's line, and trying to open up a hole there. Oh, look at that! That's going to be a nice self-assist. Was that was that streak? I think it was Jeremy Strecker in the pivot suit. Brings himself around the front to help Badger, the Canadian jammer. A big hit out from Beesting, and Beesting getting hit then by M4 from Canada, but managing to stay on his skates, and Jonathan R coming back, getting a little help from Nick Becker there, and Streak up at the front, so driving onto Streak's jersey and getting a throw out into the front of the pack and finally managing to break free. And, of course, you and I know that with Jeremy Strecker, very, very good in the pack, but the guy can jam like a madman if you need him to. You know, he can, and he started out very consistently with Magic City as a jammer, um, and then as TJ kind of came to the front as a jammer and wanted to try that, they put in TJ, they started jamming TJ a lot more, and Jeremy started to take a lot more of that blocking responsibility, and it turns out that that footwork that makes him such an incredibly awesome jammer oh, makes yeah. him a marvelous blocker. Well, and, and I'll tell you, Julia, that is always the case with a good jammer. Yeah. You can't lose by taking a good jammer and putting them. I mean, you take a look at Jukebox. Uh, uh, Jukebox, a, a player for the MNRG who, who's got footwork unlike very many people oh, yeah. that play the game. Uh, she, she could jam. She could jam anytime she wanted to. Where is she more important to them in the past? Yeah, exactly. And, and, yeah, and I think she brings that with her to any game she plays. And she also, of course, she's on Team USA Women's. Um, quick, oh, update, yes. quick update from the other track. Uh, Team England at 2.09 and France at 1.08. They've got about a minute left. Uh, we have a, an official timeout. They were just fixing a track issue. So a little maintenance issues we have here at the track. And, and of course, we all know that when we have a track issue here, you don't have to bring out the forklift. For the love of God, just get out the tip. And what do we got? About, is that eight minutes and seven seconds left to go? Looks like eight minutes in this game. Uh, I did have a question on the Twitter feed. Uh, nobody has seen seahorses in this in this bout. I'm not sure why. I can certainly check and find out. Uh, yeah, I was actually thinking that very same thing. It's very possible that they're saving him for the next bout. I, I almost think that's the case. Oh, and it's 18 minutes. It looks like we have a little... Oh. Somebody standing in front of our I one on the screen like here. Going <laughs> yeah, we've got kind of we've got kind of a strange point of view from this particular track. We don't have a good view of the uh, scoreboard and everything. There's a lot of NSOs over there trying to keep track of the action. Oh, oh my, goodness. my goodness. That's a flying Superman with a seat grab. He tried to go after Porter. Porter took a dive and and uh, Canada's number 66 went right over the top of him. And as much as Red has struggled here today, they're still putting him out on the jammer line. And, of course, I love Canada. I love Team Canada. I love everything about Canada. But I think it's time to try something different. <laughs> I definitely agree. Canada has to start seeing what their strategy is going to be against this team going in again. And... Uh, you know, I think a lot of teams are having that problem with Team USA as they watch, and then Team USA can so easily 
by what they're going to do, then it makes it tough. Well, again, we have seen Walker out there. We have seen Walker out there a couple of times. Now, of course, they're putting a little more tape down on the track. Let's pay a couple of bills. We want to say thank you to the Great Britain uh, emergency medical staff. This next jam brought to you by the GBMS, the only United Kingdom Roller Derby Association endorsed medical team. And thankfully, we have not had to see them in action all that much. I think we've only had a couple of injuries here this weekend. Um, another thing, Julia, that we've seen over the course of time uh, were injuries that sometimes were just rampant. Yeah. Uh, uh, we've really, I think, only had uh, two or three uh, injuries. Yeah, we've only had a couple of uh, vaguely serious injuries, which I'm very glad for. Um, we had Sho for Japan, uh, who wound up being injured and unable to play. And uh, there was, I believe, they, uh, I think I've seen one more sling being sported. Yeah, we did, and we did have an injury the first day. We had a player break his uh, leg in two places, Ooh, um, which was really one of our one of our MRDA board members, actually. Um, yeah, Reaper was injured in that bout, and uh, oh, he just injured. Reaper was injured just now in the England France bout. So we do have a few injuries. We have a great staff, uh, a medical staff uh, here, and we don't like that to happen, but sometimes it does. Uh, I did just get kind of an update on the roster for Team USA. Seahorses Forever was not rostered for this bout. Yeah, that's, um, so makes he sense. he is uh, sitting out there. They have not released the roster for the next bout yet, so they don't know. I was not able to find that out. They have not decided. Oh, I'm thinking he's gonna play. So a pot, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna wait and get a confirmation of that. But uh, I I'm gonna say that I would probably I would probably guess that if anything they're saving him for that last final bout. So. And of course that final bout it should everything stay the way that is that it is set up right now. And as much as I am. A derby announcer, I'm also a realist, it really <laughs> does look like it's going to be the USA versus the United Kingdom. And I think that's going to be a great bout if that's what happens. I think it's going to be a very loud bout. Yeah. Well, I know, uh, I know the bout that they played against Scotland yesterday was probably the loudest I've heard it in this building all weekend. I have things going on in both ears and I couldn't hear myself talk. <laughs> So. Well, you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you have never been to an international competition, yeah, I mean, granted, we're talking World Cup here, but you can go to tournaments where simply teams from different countries are represented. The noise and the, and the patriotism behind the fans that show up is just unbelievable. Well, and it's and so definite. It's so great, people. You know, everybody's really excited. Oh, sorry, Scott Slamilton headed to the penalty box. Um, so Canada on a power jam. And, you know, credit to Slamilton right there. I've seen too many people slacking on getting themselves yep. back to that penalty box. Right there, he is probably skating faster at that moment than he has been able to the entire jam. Well, and your penalty doesn't out. start until you hit the penalty box. Yep. You're wasting a lot of time if you are waiting on getting to the penalty box. And as the jammer especially, you need to get on that and get out of the penalty box as quickly as you can. And I tell you, this is just simply an amazing accomplishment for both of these leagues. When you consider the fact that both the United States and the Canada span so much space. Canada, the lead little, jammer, if you look at that. Yep. I'm sorry to interrupt you, nope. but that was pretty miraculous uh, I bet you right that's there. Walker. Number 12 from Canada, Walker, you are correct. And he's just inching along the edge there as he's up against Corey Ackles. And he's going to sneak, or excuse me, that's Wyatt. And he's just going to sneak right past. Just, you know, take his time and sneak out. Scott Slamilton back on the track. Well, I'm Walker, you, you know, here's kind of an example, too, where, well, you stood up. There's not a whole lot you can do. Walker's smart to call it off right there. Well, and Peter Pan pushing him out on the inside line, and instead of bothering to come back and recycle, he just calls off the jam. Uh, Canada challenged one of the plays. They said the U.S. jammer took a knee to avoid a low block, and uh, 
subsequently did low block somebody. It was assessed and there was no penalty assessed for that. So that timeout is done. So remember, if you don't exist, you can't actually low block somebody. Well, that's very true, yeah. It'd make you a really, really interesting teammate, though, certainly. <laughs> There we see the rev out there right now, challenging up front, and Jonathan R around the outside. Jonathan R kind of looking like he's flying for a moment there. He is, he is flying. Magnum PIMP leading the way for Jonathan R through the pack, and Corey Ackless up front. The one thing, uh, I'm sorry about that, Julia, but you know, the one thing about Jonathan R is he is containable. But the thing is, he is tenacious beyond belief. Yeah, he's not going to let that happen. He's just he, you can contain him, and then he's just going to keep beating at you until you do let him go. Finally. He's kind of he's kind of like that running back that's going to give you 120 yards, but you got to give him 30 carries. Yeah, looks like Canada on the power jam right now, and so uh, Percy Control, Corey Ackles, and John Wyatt trying to keep Canada's jammer contained and not able to. So he does break free finally. And and for a, for a man that has had incredible success this entire weekend, this U.S. defense has just given him fits. With the exception of this chance. I was going to say, I, even with that, he's going to pick up those five points, and Canada is going to go. Such an excellent job of having representation from eight or nine different leagues coming into this. That's amazing. That is amazing when you consider how far spread apart so many of these leagues are and, and how well that they have played. Oh, and there he's going to get driven out of bounds. bouncing up and down there in the back behind the line. I'm thinking that's Red back there. Yeah. Up against Corey Porter once again. Red, Brad S and Walker all very difficult to tell apart. I think that was actually going to turn out guys. to be Brad oh, Ass. Brad yeah. Ass, okay. And Braddus, nice job there. He's going to try to push himself through that. But I tell you, the leverage of these guys in the U.S. is just giving them nothing. Great job on Braddus for drawing that penalty on Porter, and so he's going to have a power jam here. Oh, it looks like he also drew the penalty on Nick Becker. So Nick Becker headed to the penalty box, care of Braddus. Yeah, he had them both well outside the zone of engagement when they were, when they were roughing them up there. And oh, oh Brad Ass, look at that nice move right there. Beautiful One job. Absolutely gorgeous move there by Brad Ash, just focused and rolling around on the one skate. So he's going to give it another try. He's taking a lot oh, of abuse. Man. Oh, yeah, he just took he took a pretty tough hit. Yeah, he took a pretty big high block there of, yeah. um, from what looks like number three, is, I, I believe. Number three would be Peter Pan. And so, yeah, it looks like he took a really decent high block right up to his head. And, and what's been interesting is we've seen a lot of those calls this weekend, and it's not a call we see very often. No, it really isn't, and, it, and it's so easily avoidable. And so he's going to pick up five more points as he comes around, and he sees Corey Porter coming out of the penalty box. And he's, he's going to not call off that jam. He's just going to keep trying to push. Oh, nice job there. He thought about that pretty carefully and then he thought, you know, I'm pretty sure I can get five more points and have my teammates hold him off and that was a good call on his part. Well, I think he saw the opening and I think he saw the way the pack was stacked and it was in his favor. Yeah, very. He certainly didn't have to make a quick move to get through. No, that. definitely. And that was, a, I mean, he could have easily called out that jam as soon as he saw Porter coming up behind him, but he just said, no, I'm going to try and get those extra few points. 
We got a timeout, USA, right now. We're gonna yeah. talk to you about a few things that are going on in the building and online. Uh, oh, England France final is 227 to 114, so that means England is going to the final, and they're gonna play against whoever wins this bout now. The Men's Roller Derby Association would like to wish all the teams competing in the Men's Roller Derby World Cup the best of luck this weekend. The MRDA is the international governing body for the Men's Flat Track Roller Derby and wants you to join them in the growing world of Men's Roller Derby. For more information about joining and the benefits of being part of the MRDA, visit them at mensrollerderbyassociation.com. That is mensrollerderbyassociation.com. And on a personal note, I just really want to I want to take a moment and thank all of my Canadian friends. I tell you, I got home last night. My Facebook page is, <laughs> were filled with people who remembered that my band from Canada expired uh, this weekend. The, the Canadians love you, man. Uh, I, I know, and I love them. It's and, great. And uh, thank you all. It, it put such a big smile on my face. I'm glad they're letting you back in. I, I'm not as glad as I am. <laughs> Scott Slamilton's going to be out in front. Does a nice job of getting through there pretty cleanly. Looks like we have the Canadian Jammer back out of the box. It's going to be number five, Red. He's going to try and take on Magnum and Quadzilla. And I tell you, Tank almost has him. Tank just not quite far enough to the back line to keep Slamilton from uh, going out of bounds. And we get down into the third corner, kind of a... Grum over there, he's gonna spin off one block. Solomon looks at the bench, they tell him to keep going. Oh, and right now, I tell you, Quadzilla is not just a great skater, he is a big man. He is a very large man, and he's a really solid guy on the line, and you know, he, he has come so far in the last couple of years. I don't know that you're going to find anybody maybe more physically fit than Quadzilla. And and so I tell you, that's a tough, tough matchup when Red is going to get right into his chest. Yeah, and uh, Red on the power jam for Canada right now. And so it uh, looks like, and there are short people in their jammer rotation. So number 222 and number 66. Yeah, Tichborn's going to come back out yep. there. And he's going to join... Uh, Join Nelson there on the line and try and hold off Quadzilla. This weekend is the first time I've had a chance to see Tichborn skate, and I have to say I've been really, really impressed. Really, well, really, really, really good guy. And he's so low to the ground, his center of gravity is so low, and he's yes. such a bulky guy that he just throws his weight around, and it's going to be really disconcerting if he catches you right off balance there. Does a nice, yeah, does a nice job working from a low crouch. And uses those shoulders. So the next game that you can view here on the stream is at 1 p.m. on the Roller Derby City track. Get out of here, Julia. Yeah. What game would it be? It is the uh, final of the day, Belgium versus Sweden. Well, well, it's the final of the day for this the track. Correct. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, don't that. turn everything off for the love of God. We no, haven't no, no. even played the semifinal of the final yet. No, no, you wanna you wanna keep watching. Keep watching your TVs. Uh, I do have a little. For those of you wondering if you want to be involved in roller derby and how amazing it is, I have to tell you a little human interest story. Uh, the venue here after Argentina played, uh, and, I, I, and the people in Argentina are going batty for this thing. I mean, those guys are going home to a parade, and the news is running it and everything. The venue here took up a collection, and they have raised over a thousand pounds to help cover Argentina's costs to get here and to get back. That's amazing. Um, and they, they have a huge roster back in Argentina, people that were not able to make it and, uh, you know, things like that. And so they took up a collection, and Argentina has got a little uh, a little nest egg now to work with and get them back and forth to these things. And so uh, Argentina, we had a lovely, lovely announcer who speaks Spanish and has been streaming everything in Spanish, and she is so gorgeous and talented, and we're so lucky to have their team here. I know that um, Quad Skate Shop, uh, gave away a pair of skates to one of the Japanese skaters. He had these yes. skates that looked like they should have yeah, come out of the bottom of a lake, and they uh, molded him new skates and gave him brand new skates to get him rolling uh, in roller derby. And yeah, get I, believe, them I believe when he got here they were broken. Uh, yep. He wasn't sure if he was going to be able to skate. Yeah, and so uh, and those are the kinds of things that happen. I, this is a competition, obviously, but we all want people to be able to be safe and to be able to be able to skate and uh, and to do those things. So. 
uh, we're pretty good to each other here in Derby, I think. Yeah, I think so too. And I'll tell you again, the sportsmanship all the way around. Even as we take a look at the uh, Jammer line right now, uh, you see the guys from Canada and Team USA talking, yeah. and smiling, and shaking hands. Well, and of course, that stand aside, he plays for Puget. He's Canadian, yes. so he plays yeah. for Team yep. Canada, and. You know, and that's great. You have that. They're all just chatting and having a great time. And Jonathan are smiling like he does. And and uh, even us, we've been treated really well here. And I, I know that every time I come yeah. to a tournament, I'm I'm treated very well, and I'm very appreciated by the guys. And, and yeah. In fact, we should really give a shout out to everybody that's helped organize this. Uh, you know, we want to say thanks to the Angles. We want to say thanks to Statman. Uh, personally, I want to say I want to say thanks to Valkyrie, who has been our uh, oh, announcer wrangler. Yeah, she has she's been she's incredible, top notch. And of course, you have uh, tons of staff here running around, getting food for people, and running cameras, and making sure everybody's safe, and and grabbing little, uh, just little bits of things that people need. And there's, every every time I question, they can't answer. Oh, exactly. And every time I say I need this thing, or we're trying to find this thing, they say, Oh, I can get you that. Just hang out here for two seconds, and I'll I'll grab it for you. And and so it, they're very organized here, and they seem to really have it under control. And we've been really lucky to get this staff in this venue for the very first ever of this event. And, and the officiating has been off the hook. Oh, definitely. I mean, this this might be this might be the best officiated tournament that I have seen. And of course, we got to thank uh, Cherry Fury in this trial for a lot of that, but as well. But uh, got to extend that thanks to all the officials and NSOs. Okay, we are back to the action, and we do have an official timeout that happened, and we're going to hear a little bit about that in a second. We're getting an update on that as we speak. Number zero, L. Toronto, Toronto again. Up against Becker. Becker not going to give him much to work with, but he's finally going to get through. And Streak is going to pick up the penalty for that move right there. So a little unusual for Streak to be sitting in the penalty box, but there he is. And, oh, beautiful move there. Able to squeeze past Becker and staying finally. Well, and that's, you know, that's really, that's really Elton, you know, Elton Hunt's real, his forte is his ability to move. As a big man, uh, backward, forward, sideways. And, and, and that time it was incredible because, uh, you know, Becker pushing him out, and instead of recycling all the way to the back, he just hopped in right behind him and went around before B -Stank, or before Becker could even think. I, I, think where, I think where the U.S. defense has really given him a hard time is they've not provided him with any space. Okay, that's going to be... Metal Ed, one of my favorite names in the world, is going to tell us that that's going to be uh, no pass, no penalty. And he's going to pick up five more points, and I hope he's keeping an eye out because Scotty Slamilton just got out of the penalty box. But as he did, most of Canada's pack got re-released onto the track as well, and so... We're back to having a lot of people standing out there. Wow. I tell you, right there, Walker, I think, saved himself a major collision as he pulls up just in time to avoid being hit by, I believe it was Stang, who was trying to get back into position. So we did have a, a review on that last call. The U.S. was contesting the cut track on their jammer reentry. Uh, one of the bridging skates was sent off, so... They were saying that both the skates were not off track. The call did stand, and he is going to serve the penalty for that. So, And now you can hear the crowds really start to get into it as we're starting to come down to the last five minutes, and it looks like 54 seconds. Jonathan R. having a rough time. Sanchez and the Rev just giving him a hard, hard time getting through that pack. Number 403 finally with Sanchez pushing him out. So Rice Ball will try and recycle into the back of the pack. 
And it doesn't quite work. Jonathan R. rolling around the outside and able to make that lead jammer. Well, as we talked oh. about before, Jonathan R., you can detain him for so long, but if you give him enough time, he's tenacious enough, he's going to get through. Well, and Jonathan R. not picking up lead jammer. He did pick up a penalty on his way through, and so he is not the lead jammer, but he was the first one out. So I, that, that must have been a uh, no pass, no point. Corey Akabliss sitting in the box for Team USA, and we have about five minutes left on the clock. The USA breaking the three-century mark. Canada breaking the century mark, which is, I think, the best score we've seen against the U.S. this weekend. So 113 points for them against USA's 302. Yeah. Yes, by far. And, of course, we want to remind you all at home that this is all going to finish up with the championship of the USA playing against Team England. And I have a feeling that is gonna be one hell of a bout. Oh, right, nice job there. The forward gonna come out, he's gonna take a nice shot. He's gonna stay on his feet. That was Ashton right there, that got a hold of him. Porter hot on his tail, and so Porter's just gonna call off that jam and reset. I just can't get over Porter's shame. Yeah. It's, it's a little strange to see him without the beard. Corey Porter is a uh, is an English teacher in his in his other life outside of here. That's what he does. He also owns a dog with a mohawk. Uh, that doesn't surprise me, nope. especially based on the beard that he yeah, used to exactly. have. Yeah, exactly. I think he's actually more aerodynamic now. Maybe Ooh, that, that could be it. it. Yeah. The wind tunnel tested. They found out he was more. Oh, uh, I wonder the if beard. that's the case. Because it wasn't a pointy beard. It we'll have to interview him afterwards and find out. Yeah, eh? I'll let you do that. <laughs> I'll ask him. All right. We'll find out if that if that was his reasoning behind it. Looks like we have a timeout called by U.S. Probably using their last timeout here, having a discussion. <laughs> Of course, we are sponsored by amazing people, including Fast Girl Skates, Unparalleled Expertise, Customer Service, and Fast Economical Shipping. Visit us at www.fastgirlskates.com. And also look us up on Instagram if you have a picture of you watching the Men's Roller Derby World Cup or of something exciting happening at the World Cup, post it on Instagram, and we might put it on the live stream, and everybody can see how much fun you're having. Or if you have a picture of you with, of a picture of you, watching the stream and having a good time, that would be wild. Back to the action. Uh, Magnum PIMP in his first time as jammer for this bout. Yes, absolutely. Magnum PIMP potentially. And Julia, I don't think you would disagree with me on this. The most clutch player in roller derby. I, I would agree with that completely, actually. Uh, and Magnum, again, one of those, typically a jammer when he's with the gatekeepers. And here they're utilizing him more as a blocker, and he's amazing. Uh, but he can just jam like crazy when you get him out there. Looks like he did call out that jam pretty quickly. Uh, we do have Scott Slamilton creeping up on six penalties right now, so hopefully he can hold out on that extra penalty for a couple of minutes and stay in this bout. We don't have anybody that's fouled out yet in this bout. And there we have Elton Ons. Percy Control rejoining the pack from the penalty box, and Elton Ons picking up, I think he's lead jammer. Yes, he is. And he's uh, doing a little <laughs> jammer on jammer action there with Jonathan R. He's just gonna <laughs> Jonathan R. is just going to shoot around him, raise his arms. Uh, Elton Hunt's kind of like, uh, wait a second, what's going on back over here? It looks like he's just going to call off that jam. A very smart move on his part. And we're going to see Coach Lime. He's going to take a timeout. Uh, well, this explains it. Raven Cameron says that Red is probably not a robot, but he's definitely a cyborg. <laughs> so that explains a lot about what's been happening in this bout now. <laughs> I Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and, and you know, even though this game unfortunately hasn't been as competitive as the Canadian team would have liked, that team is there. Oh, it's amazing to watch them, and I, I can't wait to see uh, see them play more. Well, you and you're going to get to you're going to get them to get to see them play Team France in the uh, semifinal. And I think that is going to be an absolutely amazing bout to see because France is on their game today. 
And I, th I also think you're probably going to see you're going to see exactly what Red, uh, exactly what Brad Ass, uh, Walker, uh, Elton Hunt are, are, are going to bring to the table. And you're going to see that later today on the stream. Stick around because it's just going to get more exciting from here. And oh, it looks like uh, Canada's is number 66. That's going to be Titchborn is also at six penalties. So we have a lot of penalty buildup here in the last quarter that we're hoping can hold out for these last two and a half minutes. That pesky penalty buildup. Oh boy. And Port right up against Quadzilla. And nice two oh, goal. Oh no. I don't. Oh, he flew right over Quadzilla, but that is not a track cut because Quadzilla went out as well. So Red picking up Lee Jammer for Canada. Quadzilla having to recycle to the back of the pack. And Red coming up on the back with Corey Porter still caught inside the pack. Interesting. Uh, that's an interesting play that something doesn't come out of that. Red. Oh, nice. Ooh. Getting down low. Good job staying on his skates. Boy, that Sugar Boots butt bump is just hard, hard <laughs> oh, yeah. to get around, and he just stayed up and went around. That's because Sugar Boots is so tall, he'll literally sit on you. Basically. When you come around. But Red doing a great job. Corey Porter headed to the penalty box. Power jam for Red for Canada, and Sugar Boots trying to loop around and stop him, but Red. Oh! Almost keeps it in bounds, but as we're going to see, Sugar Boots. Skates out of bounds. That allows Red to come back in without the track cut penalty. So great job there. Five more points for Red as he loops the track, taking advantage of this power jam situation for Canada. Peter Pan and Sugar Boots once again in front of him trying to work that out. Looks like Canada's just going to let him manage that on his own. As long as he pushes Peter Pan far enough, he's going to have to let him go, which he does. And five more points for Red. So that jam is over, and Canada managing to push it up to 127. Yeah, Canada shown a lot of life the uh, last uh, last quarter of the game. If here. I'm reading that right, 14 points for Red on that jam. Yes, and 30 seconds left on the time clock. Now we've got that three wall of, uh, that's going to be Magnum, Magnum staying in back here, and they're going to end up forcing Bradass out of bounds. Looked like he was going to get through. Quadzilla wanting him to back way up, and they're going to force him to do that. Quadzilla then rejoining the pack and Bradass trying to break back through. Canada trying to break him up a wall, or excuse me, a hole in there. And it almost worked until they released Corey Porter from the box. <laughs> you, you get the feeling that that if this was with Blender, somebody just went from hitting the chop button to puree, yeah. you know? Yeah, and this is, you know, men's derby is a, a lot more, and I, I hate to use just basic words, but it's a lot more pushing and shoving. It's a lot more, actually, you know, I think the best way to put oh, it is it's a, it's a lot more body leverage. Yeah, a, a Brad Ass just taking a huge yeah. hit from Nick Becker there on the inside, and I believe that is the end of our bout. We're going to see if we can get you a final score, but unofficial final score, 304 to 127. Nick, Nick Becker, a fellow Wisconsin. Exactly, yeah, he used to play for the Green Bay Smackers. Yep. Out in Wisconsin and still uh, still participates in their league pretty heavily. He owns a rink out there. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I have uh, worked out there to, to help a uh, number of different leagues at different times. Yeah, definitely. I announced the uh, Green Bay Smackers' very first bout out there, and it was amazing. They are a really cool team. So, so ne next up on this track is the decider for the plate, uh, Ireland versus Finland at 1.30. And, and the plate is going to be your basically the winner for the fifth spot. Correct. Yep. Just and so that everybody understands. So, oh, the fourth spot. Oh, I'm sorry, the third, fourth spot. Yep, the fourth spot. Okay. The the jug the jug is the fifth place. All right. And uh, we're still working on what all the utensils on the <laughs> table are over here on yeah, the announcing they, table. Uh, they've done such a wonderful job with all of this. There's a lot of a lot of different accolades, a lot of different awards that could go up. But let's we're going to look at it this way. We got Team USA going to play. 
Team England at the end of this thing. And I tell you what, it's going to be great. Don't turn anything off. This is Bob Noxious sitting alongside Julia Childless. And we are going to say adieu. Yes, we are. Thank you. Goodbye. We'll see you in a few minutes right here, 1.30 at this track.